is Katie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be going through all the books that I read in June and June was a really great reading month for me I actually read 12 books which includes 10 books one novella and one manga So let's get into what I read in June first off. We have better together by Christine Ruscio and This is basically a remix of the parent trap and freaky Friday so we have sisters Jamie and Siri uh, basically living separate lives and one day they end up at the same wellness retreat together trying to find their way in life and now they have decided to hatch a plot to switch places and it's time that they get to confront their estranged parents and face their own issues head on the adventure goes from there i ended up giving again but better christine ratio's first novel three three and a half stars but this one i really liked and i gave it four stars and i liked it more than i thought that i would so i wasn't sure how i was going to feel about it but it was actually really heartwarming and it got to some serious family issues because if you think about the fact that like your parents had a really bad divorce and then like literally kept your sister a secret from you one of the sisters remembers and one of the and the other doesn't that's like kind of how they are like reunited and so like there is a lot of like family trauma that has to get dug through in this and i thought it was handled uh, with a lot of humor and care in this novel and there was also a main character that was bi which i didn't know going into the story but i really enjoyed that representation as well so yeah it was just like a really cute and heartwarming story and i picked it up at a time where i really needed something lighthearted, and it delivered next i picked up neon gauze by katie robert and like if you have been around okay also look at this art print it's like the pre-order print Okay, if you've been around, you know that like I have literally been in love with Kitty Robert since I first picked up Desperate Measures in like August of last year and I've been like slowly working my way through all of her books and this is her book through source books, Casablanca. She has like a mix of books that are traditionally published and self-published so this was one of her traditionally published ones which means that we kind of have to wait longer in between installments which is kind of sad but it's fine because usually she just like pumps books out. Um, so this is a modern retelling of Hades and Persephone and Persephone Dimitro is a society darling um, but she plans to escape the ultramodern city of Olympus and live her own life outside of the influence of the 13 which are like the 13 main gods but they're like positions that are handed down in the city. However, that's all ripped away when her mother ambushes her with a surprise engagement to Zeus whose last Hera um, vanished under mysterious circumstances. With no options left, Persephone flees to the lower city of Olympus, which is a forbidden undercity, and she makes a devil's bargain with a man that she once thought to only be a myth. And Hades has spent his life in the shadows, but he sees an opportunity to get revenge in Persephone. Okay, I literally ate this up in one day. Five stars. So good. It's modern with like a tiny little speckle of fantasy to it, but like, okay, obviously this is an 18 plus book because it is smut but oh my god so good i'm so excited to see where katie robert takes the series next because there's the three sisters so but she says she has like nine total planned if they get picked up but like literally love this so much like i just love every hades and persephone retelling that i read i also need to read the one by um the other one a touch of darkness i'm planning on picking that one up soon but yeah loved this it was super steamy had a great time. Next, I picked up A Crier's War by Nina Varela. After the war of kinds ravaged the kingdom of Rabu, the Otome are now in power and have oppressed the humans which once created them. Isla is a human servant rising the ranks to be a handmaiden to Lady Cryer and she's on a mission for revenge because the Otome murdered her parents. Cryer is the heir to the Sovereign and she's been preparing to take over as ruler. But then she's betrothed to Skyer Kinnock who is not as he seems and she discovers that her father isn't as benevolent as she thought. And when she meets Isla her life is set on a collision course and will change forever. This was just such a beautiful YA sapphic romance. I gave it five stars. I just absolutely loved Cryer and Ayla's love story and the way that they like slowly are like trying to deny their feelings for one another because like Cryer's an Otome and Ayla's a human. So like they can't like really be together, but yet they still have feelings for each other. It's so good. I also just really enjoyed the world building of like what would happen if these automatons like 
took over the humans and the dy political dynamics of that and it definitely like flipped the switch kind of on like the way we typically think about the world so i really enjoyed it and i just thought it was so beautiful it was very well written it was just such like a solid and good ya book and i was reading this and i'm like this is why i love ya fantasy just so amazing and definitely check it out after that i read the moonfire bride by sylvia mercedes and this is from my video where i list different fantasy romances that i want to pick up and i will say those videos are meant for romances that are like spicy but this was definitely a clean romance which i didn't know going into it there's nothing wrong with that but just like be aware that's what you're picking up so this follows varela and she is a seamstress by day that she's just trying to provide for her family however she has caught the eye of a fey lord and she's taken to be the moonfire bride and the only rule of her marriage is that she can't see her husband's face and she's basically been brought to help break some sort of curse so i ended up giving this one three stars um the writing was very lyrical and beautiful and that part was good and i really enjoyed the fey world and the setting but it just moved like a little bit slow to me and the romance was almost so slow burn to the point where like it was slow burn and then all of a sudden it was like all at once they were in love and i felt like i missed that that middle part of their romantic development um so the romance fell a little bit flat for me but yeah just like a a nice solid fey fantasy book um definitely on the side for like younger audiences i would say this is more in lines of like a ya fantasy romance okay next i read iron heart which is the sequel to crier's war so you already know what it's about but in this beginning of this like the ending of Cryer's War was big cliffhanger and Isla and Cryer are kind of in two different settings in the beginning and I really didn't know how the author was going to bring them back together but I was really surprised at the way that it was done and I thought it was just done very well obviously I gave this one five stars this is a duology and I just felt like the world expanded a lot and we got to see more of the landscape of the kingdom and really get into the, more of the politics of this world and what is going on and again just beautifully written and just swept me away in the romance and i was just so so touched by isla and crier's romance and i just thought that this was a really really solid second installment and just wrapped up this duology beautifully then next i read the stark last girl by sylvia mercedes this was a short novella that is the point of view of Erolas in the moonfire bride and so it's just in his point of view i always love reading stories like in the male love interests point of view i just think it's kind of fun to get in the head of the other character and see like what they're thinking in a situation it was really short um i tend to not rate novellas at all just because i feel like you can't really compare them to a book so no rating on this one but it was just good to read then next i read blade of secrets by trisha levenseller oh my god i love this book a new favorite if you don't know trisha levenseller is literally an autobi author for me like all of her books are right here i have read all of her books up to date and i have been following her career closely pretty much ever since um i don't know i think i started reading them like around the time in between when this one came out and this one came out but i literally love her i definitely want to do a reread of her older books as well but literally so good and this is a start of a duology for her you're following 18 year old Ziva who really prefers to spend all of her time tucked away in her forge as she is a magically gifted bladesmith and so she can imbue magic into the weapons that she creates and her and her sister run a bladesmith shop then Ziva receives a commission from a powerful warlord and she creates a sword that is able to take the secrets of those that it is like used on and the sword is so powerful um that it, during the demonstration Ziva learns of the secrets of this warlord and that they intend to use it for very, very destructive intentions. And so Ziva and her sister take off and are on the run from this warlord in order to either destroy the sword or find someone worthy of wielding it. And of course they are joined by a distractingly handsome mercenary and a scholar that knows everything that there is to know about magic and they set out on their quest like a good quest novel but like oh my god i loved this i love this like trisha levenseller like can always just build up the tension to a first kiss so well and like her kiss scenes are always freaking amazing and like 
just like squealing on the inside. I really loved the sisterly dynamic in this book as well because we have Siva who is older but she has like a lot of social anxiety and it makes it kind of like hard for her to function in social events and so um, her sister Temra really is the social one and like helps her in those aspects and they just like really depend on one another and have this beautiful relationship and of course there are some rocky moments but I just really enjoyed the exploration of their sisterhood and also the ro both romances in this because there's also like a side romance and so good so good like just always so sweet and amazing and like oh, just warms my heart and I honestly cannot wait to see where our characters go in the second novel but like I literally just loved this so much I loved it so much so yeah Trisha Levenseller continues to be one of my all-time favorites Next, I read What We Devour by Lindsay Miller. I was sent an arc by the publisher, um, and this follows Lenora, who has the power of the two gods inside of her, and because of that, she is on the run and just hides away in a small village where she's betrothed to her best friend Julian and is the town's undertaker. That'll change when the crown prince comes to the town and immediately knows what Lenore is and in an attempt to save her betrothed father she is she then goes with the prince because there is this door that they need to stop from opening and behind this door are the vile gods that will come through and destroy the world so i ended up giving this one three stars but the more i think about it, it might be like a two star so maybe like a 2.5 star like it was very interesting like kind of cool but it it felt like the magic system was just hard to grasp um, and not to say that magic systems can't be complicated but i felt like it wasn't fully explained in a way that made sense so it was kind of hard for me to follow along on all of like the very intricate magic system things it's definitely like a weird creepy like horror why fantasy like i would call it like a horror fantasy almost kind of so i definitely think if you're someone that enjoys like the darker creepier horror fantasies like this will be um a good one for you but for me the magic system kind of like threw me out of it and also like the creepiness kind of threw me out of it that's all next i read the sunfire king by sylvia mercedes and this is the sequel to the moonfire bride and in this one we see valera go out on an adventure to rescue her and i really enjoyed this novel because of the fact that like Valera really comes into herself as a person and she finds like her own inner strength so that was just a really fun character journey to go on with her. I did give this one three stars but I was so frustrated because they finally like at the end there's like a steamy scene but then it fades to black and that's the end of the book and I'm like ugh. But like I kind of knew at that point that it was like a clean romance and it wasn't a steamy romance so it's fine. It's like not anything to actually like be mad about because it's not like what the book was but i was like frustrated i'm like oh my god and i was like ah but it's fine so yeah definitely i thought it was like a new adult age level but it's definitely like a ya fantasy then next i read orange volume one by ichigo takano and this is a manga and this is like a bind up of like the first three volumes i think i think there's three or four of, of these guys. On the day that Naho begins 11th grade, she gets a letter from her future self, basically telling her that she's going to meet a new friend at school today and that she has to change things about her life because this friend will eventually end up committing suicide. So obviously there's a very big trigger warning for suicide on this book. And so like this letter basically begs Naho to watch over him and to change the things that she does in order to ensure that he survives. So I, love this i gave it five stars it's obviously very sad because you know it is dealing with the topic of suicide and it's kind of like like what would you do if you could go back and change things to try to prevent that very gripping and i'm really interested in reading on and like seeing like what happens and how these characters handle the situation and like as i was reading on and on the plot like got thicker and i just really enjoyed it and i can see like a lot of people when they first get into manga read this and i can see why because i feel like it is kind of like a good beginner manga if you are like comfortable with the subject matter next i read the nature of witches by rachel griffin and okay also the naked cover really? wow i wasn't like you know i hadn't heard too much about this book when i read it and i was absolutely blown away by how much i love this like i loved this book 
Um, so Clara Densmore is an ever witch, meaning that she has the power of all four seasons. Um, inside of her whereas witches are typically the power of one season this is like a contemporary fantasy so like in the contemporary world witches are responsible for controlling the climate their power peaks like in the season of their birth which is why you would be like a spring witch or like a summer witch so a lot of hope lies in clara because her magic is tied to all four seasons and she is very very powerful clara really wants nothing to do with her magic because it only brings death and destruction and her magic has targeted the people that she loves in the past and so she's like very afraid of her own power. As the climate kind of spirals out of control, Clara begins to like accept that like maybe her help is needed and she has a witch training her named Sang and they form a bond like as he trains her to to be able to hone her power and control it so that it won't harm those around her and she can use it to control the atmosphere. And I, I gave this five stars. I just felt like the writing was so lyrical and beautiful. And like it just really, you just really got into Clara's head and understood her emotions. And I just felt like this was a very character driven, emotionally driven contemporary fantasy. And I loved it so much. Like just everything about it was beautiful. Like the writing just transported me and like, I don't know, I just, keep, I just keep thinking about this book after I have finished it. So to me, that's a sign that I loved it. And then the last book I read in June was The Beast by Katie Robert. And this is the fourth in the Wicked Villain series. And so this book is basically a menage between Isabel, The Beast, and Gaetan. And basically, Isabel is like the daughter of a powerful territory leader. And The Beast and Gaetan are like his top generals but then um, basically is isabel was dating gaetan and the beast at the same time separately and they like knew about it but then they kind of like forced her to choose at the end of it and then it didn't work so then they all kind of went their separate ways but now isabel's father has died and isabel's kind of sent in by her sister to bring the beast and gaetan back into the fold to help strengthen their territory and things go from there they kind of are just like okay well we need to work out our issues and then the three of them go on the path to working out their issues. I gave this five stars. I, of course, love this. Like, I love all of Katie Roberts' books. They're always just so super spicy, and she really delivers on all the different relationship dynamics. She's a queen. I love all of her books. And with that, that is all that I read in June. I feel like it was such a solid reading month. I've just been having so much fun reading, and I feel like kind of like expanding my reading to be reading like a bunch of just like romances on Kindle Unlimited. That's definitely the key to reading like a lot of books, but also like a lot of shorter books and mix in with the longer YA books. If you just try to read long book after long book, you're not gonna read as many books, which that's fine if that's all you want to read. But like, you know, people they want to meet their good reads goals, myself included. <laughs> um, and at this point, it's a little over halfway through the year and I'm at almost like the same amount of books read as I was at the end of the year last year so I've just been reading a lot more this year um but it's been really great so that's that and let me know down below in the comments what your favorite book was that you read in June and leave a little book stack emoji if you made it this far have some fun read some books I'll catch you guys in the next